What is going on guys? It's Pete here and I've got something really awesome cooking for you today. But before we get started though, even though today is a Tuesday, A3 will be releasing videos every Monday from here on out. So if you want to stay on top of all that, make sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, so today we're going to be looking at the electric field of a point charge. So we're going to start off with a very simple definition of an electric field. So I like to think of the electric field as the magical area that surrounds any electrically charged object. So if you place the charge near any electrically charged object, that charge would feel a force. So if that made no sense whatsoever, just think about the Earth's gravitational field. The Earth has a certain pull to things in its vicinity. Think of the electric field as in a similar context. So just like the Earth's gravitational field, the strength of an electric field varies with distance. As distance increases, the strength of the electric field decreases. The farther you, away you get from the Earth, the weaker its pull. Also, if you increase the mass of the Earth, it would have a greater gravitational field. And similarly, if you increase the size of the charge producing an electric field, the strength of that electric field would also increase. So how do we find the strength of an electric field? Well, the strength of an electric field is tested by placing positive test charges around the source charge. And so a test charge is such a small magnitude that it doesn't affect the electric field of the source. We use test charges to get a sense of the force that is experienced at a certain point. Our source charge is the capital Q and our test charge is the lowercase q. So if the central charge is positive, like in our example here, then the direction of the electric field is outward because the positive source charge repels the positive test charge. It's pretty much like pushing it out. Now, if the central charge is negative, well, then the direction of the field is inward because the negative source charge is attracting or pulling in the positive test charge. So let's take a more mathematical approach and derive a formula for the electric field of a point charge. So I'd highly suggest looking at Mike's video for a deeper look on Coulomb's law, but we know from Coulomb's law that the electric force acting on a point charge Q1 from a second charge Q2 is given by the expression F equals K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared, where R is the distance between the two charges. In our scenario, let's let Q1 be the source charge, and we'll call it capital Q, and let Q2 the test be the test charge and we'll let that be lowercase q. So then our equation looks a little something like this. So then the force becomes k capital Q times lowercase q over r squared. So electric field is defined as the force per charge. So if we plug our expression for force and divide by q, what we're left with after doing a little bit of simplification is that the strength of an electric field equals k times capital Q over r squared and where Q is just you know, your source charge, R again is the distance between the source charge and what's called the field point or where you're trying to evaluate the strength of an electric field and K is Coulomb's constant and we'll get back to that in a second. So this equation is also written in the form Q over four pi times the permittivity of free space times R squared. So what are K and epsilon? So we'll explore these constants in later videos but for now just take them for the values that they are. So going back to our final expression, we get that the strength of the electric field is equal to K times capital Q over R squared. And going back to the point that I made earlier, we see that the electric field is only dependent on two things. And those two things are the, the strength of the source charge or the size of the source charge and the distance between the source charge and the field point or where a test charge could be placed. So we see that the electric field can change from point to point depending on the distance. The electric field isn't a single vector, but a collection of vectors. It's a vector field. Let's take a look at a practice problem. So we have a point charge that's located at the origin, and it has a value of negative 8 nanocoulomb. That's negative 8 times 10 to the negative 9. So we need to find the electric field vector at the field point x equals 1.2 meters and y equals negative 1.6 meters. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first I'd like to start with drawing a simple diagram. So here's our source charge, and then 1.2 meters across and 1.6 meters down gives us where our field point is located. And since we know that the source charge is negative, we know that the electric field vector must point in the direction towards the source charge. So we could draw a little vector towards the source charge. So that's the green vector I made. That's what we're looking for. Looking back at the question, we're asked to find a single vector. So we need a magnitude and we need a direction. So we can find the magnitude using our electric field formula. To find the magnitude, we just simply plug in what we already know. And the only unknown in this equation is the distance 
And we can find this using Pythagorean theorem and a little bit of simplification. So after you um, evaluate the expression, you get that the magnitude of the electric field vector is 18 newtons per coulomb. So as for the direction, we need to recall a little bit from trigonometry. And we know that the, the tangent of the angle between the green vector and the y-axis is opposite over adjacent. So to find the angle between the green vector and the y-axis, we need to take inverse tangent or arc tangent of 1.2 meters over 1.6 meters, giving us our angle, which is about 37 degrees. However, this is not our this is not the angle we're looking for. We need to find the true angle or the angle between the green vector and that white ray I just added. So we need to add 90 degrees to what we just got. And with that, we get that our final answer is about 126.9 degrees. So now that we have a magnitude and direction, we have found our electric field vector. All right, guys, we'll get into more advanced topics later on about electric fields. But for now, that's it for this one. I hope that all made sense. And as always, the more you know, the better you are. Yep.